Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another special um, little class that we are doing today from uh, our headquarter in Kagawa. And uh, my name is Akira, as maybe me and a colleague. And uh, so we're talking about um, you know, seasonal ramen, seasonal ramen ish. And that's especially uh, what we're talking about today um, the Halloween. So, like, Halloween is kind of like, you know, this month, uh, 31st. So uh, it's not going to be just Halloween, but like, uh, you know, we're talking about like kind of some seasonal uh, events that, you know, we have like, you know, from well, country to country, you know, like culture to culture and like, you know, they mean like kind of differently, uh, different, like, you know, to some like certain people and, um, you know, in different regions. So um, we're kind of talking about that, that too. And, um, you know, then, you know, how you know, can we like kind of like take advantage of like these kind of events to, um, you know, uh, strengthen our brands, right? Um, so I, I'm not going to have like much of like a lecture today. And um, well, I'm just going to briefly talk about them, like what, what I uh, wrote in this uh, whiteboard. And, uh, and then uh, we're going to make, um, yes, uh, like a special little like, you know, maybe we came up with um, from scratch on a noodle machine later. And then, you know, we're gonna to move to the kitchen later. And uh, our colleagues actually, um, yes, made a special running dish, you know, from scratch for this uh, class. So please stay tuned. And, uh, you know, you're gonna be able to like, learn how you can make this particular type of like ramen noodles, uh, you know, we can make from scratch. So please stay tuned. So let's get started on this um, whiteboard first. And then, so, um, Yeah, so like Halloween is uh, one of the, well, one of the like uh, kind of, I guess like a Christian, um, Christianity event, like, you know, kind of a celebration uh, of, well, uh, you know, like occasion that we have like kind of every year, right? Like, you know, uh, October 31st. And yeah, we do have like all these different um, events like every year, like, you know, like, but they're different, right? You know, like from region to region, country to country culture to culture and but like um but you know i think like we can take um these special occasions as like so like you know like a kind of marketing tools like to sort of like ingrain like our brands in the minds of customers and so you know people uh probably will like your customers like will probably remember you by like all these well you know a chat like all these like dishes that you create where right? develop like for these these special occasions and uh, so i think like rather than like just you know like seeing these events as like kind of kind of seasonal events just that pass you by right um you know let's take these events as like you know opportunities right for us to you know kind of express like our unique creativities and make them memorable for your customers right so um that's what we are that's what I'm kind of talking about, like on this whiteboard. And then, um, so I, I think like there are three keys to kind of crushing these special events into like kind of brand strength booster for your business, right? Okay, so, um, so you know, I think all these three keys are like uh, kind of like no brainer, but like, uh, let me just kind of like briefly like, talk about them, right? So of course, like, you know, you make your uh, offerings, like in a menu, like in dishes, like they're special for, for example, Halloween, right? And so, you know, you, I, like we all have like, you know, a perception, like images, like certain things, you know, particular events, right? Uh, from experiences and what we have seen, heard, you know, like being told, right? Um, yeah, Halloween has certain images and you know, it's like it's gotta be spooky, um, but not as much as like, you know, that, that scares the kids away. Um, so, uh, and then there's like pumpkin, like monsters, like, you know, witches and like, you know, like we, we um, kind of like put on a costume that are like totally different from us. Um, well, like, so we, we should like take like as many of these like elements as we can, like, and then like incorporate them into like our offerings, right? So ramen dishes like noodles, you know, soups, toppings, and even utensils um, <clears throat> that we offer to our customers, right? So it's, um, and then 
the secondly uh so like it's gotta be good right of course you know it's like no brainer um so your dishes like have to be good in terms of like, taste quality right um so so you got your um you know like offerings way right? and then um and so um yeah but like you know if yeah like but like you got the looks, right? Looks of, I mean, you got these, like, you know, this is like, you know, to have like a looks and, you know, uh, feel uh, like Halloween, right? But like, you know, like customers wouldn't like, wouldn't be able to like, remember, uh, you know, these dishes like, as like good meal, like if the quality and taste like don't exceed the expectations, right? So, um, but kind of like Halloween um, is kind of, kind of interesting because of that kind of nature of the event, you know, what like, Kind of images that like people have like towards these towards these events, so um, you know kind of has to like scary um, kind of like spooky looking meals, right? But they don't usually look you know like good, right? To eat as food, and you know kind of awful looking um, kind of food, uh, food like you no, know, like it kind of lowers the customer's expectations for taste, like. Um, so they don't expect them to be like, you know, good, like, cause they look like awful as a food, like, you know, it's kind of the colors and like, um, you know, all these like looks, right. Appearances of like certain parts that like you put in a, uh, ramen dish. Uh, but like, like if you, like, if you can successfully make them uh, taste good and look scary, right. And it like, you just like sure exceed, you know, their expectations. And you know you can surprise them right with these good tastes, and um, so usually like so the as an element right element of like Halloween um, so we we take pumpkins for example right and the pumpkins are like great uh, ingredients right um, but like they don't they don't like um, yeah they don't look that like spooky but like you know we can make them look um, that way and like these like pumpkins are really good um, uh, ingredients. It's easier for us to like, um, you know, make like great ramen dishes with them. Um, so like, even if you like, dish doesn't look spooky, like you know, just naming your dish like Halloween special ramen, right? And kind of like tells the customers that they're having like something special for Halloween, and and if it tastes great, right? And they're like, you know, they they'll definitely remember your, um, you know, special dishes like from you know Halloween um, event. So, uh, so it's it's got to be good, right? And it's got to look kind of different and right? spooky. And so that's yeah, that's the second key. And then uh, so the third one is like kind of kind of subtle, but like um, you know you need to like ingrain your special message, like or your know, intentions in your offers, right? Uh, for your customers. So like this could be like some jokes like or like what are the message or intentions that you feel be like appropriate for this occasion and you know help brighten the moods of customers. And you know as dining experience like this like all about like getting uh, your customers energized right and so you know we get energy from food we eat and of course like also like you know from intentions like who made these meals right and you know, of course like most of people like we eat with and you know of course how well like we like these like, whole experiences um but you know the message of intention like you convey or weave into your offerings like influence your customers in a way that you know, they'll remember your um brand right like they'll remember your shop like favorably for probably for years yeah and with um like so all these keys right uh nailed um you know, your customers will be like talking about you talking about like you know what a great experience you they have like you know their dishes right and you know to their friends right and if we also go to your shop like to have like exactly the same thing and you know they might be like posting the picture with dishes like on instagram like in yelp and other social media right so you know this is like really good I mean, you, you can turn these like all like special events like in the you know great marketing um, tools, right? And yeah, like I, I don't really care about like actually you know this particular event like Halloween, but like as long as you know there are people out there like like who you know um, care and and especially like 
kind of kids, right? Um, yeah, it's like even in Japan, like, it's like you know, kids. Kids are uh, yeah like to um, yeah kind of get excited like you know towards like Halloween. So um, and so so like if there are like you know enough number of people uh, who frequent your business, um, yeah, you should you should take this chance like make um, you know your offerings that are like kind of cater to these events and yeah make them memorable right to your customers and. So um, yeah, it takes its chance to grow your business. Yeah, so it's not just Halloween, but like also like for example like you know Easter, um, you know St. Patrick's Day, um, Cinco de Mayo, uh, like Mother's Day, right? Uh, so you know whichever event like you think that you know the majority of customers like care about, um, yeah, study what what they think about these events and like you know um, yeah gather like as many um, elements as you can like about the events and like. Uh, yeah, just, you know, turn them into your offerings. And so, you know, that's, uh, yeah, so that's uh, what I want to talk, you know, say about these uh, special, um, yeah, seasonal ramen, right? Seasonal uh, events, right? And uh, I think like we may be like doing like some seasonal um, ramen or like, you know, some other noodles, some types of noodles uh, events um, in the coming classes, but like, um, um, this class, uh, you know, we are going to do, um, yes, uh, so like, um, because, because of Jack O'Lantern, right? So the pumpkin, um, curved pumpkin uh, ramen, and um, the particular type of noodles that we are doing um, today is pumpkin seed ramen noodles. So, yeah, and um, yeah, it's going to be like pumpkin seeds, like uh, usually, I mean, uh, yeah, commonly uh, used as ingredients, um, you know, like there's pumpkin seed oil in Europe, but like not, not as, like not so much in Japan, like that we just eat uh, just the pumpkin, right? And then, you know, like we don't, we don't eat seeds usually, but um, yeah, we, we are surprised to, um, you know, at the uh, the pumpkin seed, like, you know, it's, it's potential um, to, you know, use, um, Use as like kind of ingredients and uh, yeah, so we're, we're kind of excited to do the pumpkin uh, seed ramen noodles today. So yeah, uh, let's uh, check out the ingredients first. And so because this is ramen noodles, uh, so we have uh, ramen flour. Ramen flour, that's like 10.5 uh, um, protein content uh, around, like roughly, right? And which is a um, bit, bit lower, um, or like kind of medium, actually, like for, um, you know, like as, uh, as far as like the hardness goes uh, for ramen noodles. And so this is a pumpkin seed. Um, so we ground them, like kind of we mill them, actually, um, you know, from these seeds right so we make them we turn them to powder and um, so these are the solid ingredients and uh so we have water and we have cancer and so it's kind of basically um what's different um from the uh, usual like ramen noodle uh, recipes is just pumpkin seed and this is my round like we are doing um 10 percent 10 percent of solid ingredients as um pumpkin, pumpkin seed powder so uh we're, we're putting these uh, solid ingredients into the uh, mixer right um so this is a rich mineral machine and this is a 10 kilogram mixer uh we can mix up to 10 kilograms of uh, solid ingredients at a time uh, at maximum and but like new batch is uh, four four kilograms so we put um, four kilo, kilograms of solid ingredients first right and then you know start the mixer and, uh, and for liquid ingredients um, we need to dissolve all these um, calcium and salt into the water to um, Make this uh, solution before we add it to the uh, solid. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so I think, yeah, they are thoroughly dissolved in the water, right? So after one minute and um, turn on the mixer again and start pouring the, uh, the solution into the mixer lid. And yeah, we, we directly um, just pour the, uh, the liquid into, into like this uh, mixer lid, you know, like it's, there are uh, holes, right? There are holes um, that allows these, this mix, uh, liquid to drip through, right? To the, to be added to the flour uh, that's being mixed, right? Um, so, you know, like we, we gradually add uh, liquid to the flour, right? Um, that's that's for um, good, you know, hydration of dough. And, and uh, so it's making me um, prepare this dough in advance. And um, yeah, you can see the color and uh, so like I'm gonna see like you know like being like greenish color and mixed with like white um, with flour and and it also like um, it, it kind of like you know reacted with uh, to the uh, alkaline from the alkali alkali from the uh, the country so it turned like kind of. Um, kind of pale yellow and you know with a like kind of greenish color of uh, pumpkin seeds yeah so it's it's kind of yeah pale yellow greenish color yeah and uh, hydration ratio of this dough is like kind of well fairly high and um, because the pumpkin seed um, contains like some oil as well seed oil um you know when we grind them like you know we um get a bit of like oil as well and then um so uh but like um terms like hydration um you know because it's not water um then the hydration uh like liquid content of the um the pumpkin seed powder is not you know well probably as not as much as like well liquid content of the uh, water content of the uh, the wheat uh, flour. So um, we usually add um, a little bit a little bit more of the uh, well liquid to kind of compensate for um, you know uh, kind of drier um, yeah the drier content. Uh, I mean like you know, less water content of the uh, the the solids that we are adding. So the first round of um, machining props, like we just making the rough sheet of dough from that, you know, from those like crumbles of the uh, dough, right? So it's just a very rough sheet of dough, and uh, which is like pretty fragile, we have we must say. And um, <clears throat> but you know this is a this is a start, and um, you know just making. Um, yeah, just uh, like make, like turning it into like kind of shape of sheet first for this machine to be able to um, you know process it further and yeah, so kind of like feeding it by hand, but like um, you know making sure that like all the doughs are going to be fed to the roller, right, and then. Yeah, you sh you maybe like notice all these like dots, right? The green greenish dots, the dough. So yeah, these are the yeah. So these are the um, the pumpkin seed powder, which actually have like um, certain uh, kind of distinctive uh, flavor to it. Yeah, so like basically a set of rollers is just kind of like you know pressing these doughs into um, yeah a sheet of dough, and um, and you know it's like as you can see like it's still 
pretty loud, rough. And um, so next round, like what we're doing is that like we are combining them. Like so, first like we separate it, separate it into two sheets, right? Two sheets, and um, you know, and like we are actually combining them, like so making like two layers of sheets, and then you know, well feeding feeding them into the rollers, and um, this way uh, where we have, well, we're gonna be able to like um, develop, right? Uh, gluten structure inside the dough. And um, you know, like at the same time, we are making it, making it firm, making it firm, um, you know, like being from the, from being like fragile state. And so, yeah, so like, uh, so these two separate sheets Dough like are going to the rollers and coming out as one sheet from the other side, right? And and uh, yeah, like and then I hope uh, you you guys will be able to notice um, how smoother the the dough is, like you know that dough that is like coming out like from the other side. I mean, compared to you know. The, the conditions of dough like the, that were like, you know, before um, you know, being fragile is too rough um, and you know it's it's a lot smoother and um, yeah and and then I think you you maybe like notice like more of the uh, the greenish spots like um, uh, well, like in the dough and uh, Yeah, I'm not sure like how many of you like had the uh, well, had the, like pumpkin seeds before, but like you know they're they're actually pretty pretty good. I mean, and um, I and I, I think they're really good for your health as well. And so and so this process um, would have to be repeated like um, one more time, and so that you know we can make sure that. That the gluten structure inside the dough, like, are is fully um, fully developed, and um, the the dough texture is, you know, firm enough to be like further uh, processed into uh, noodles. And you know, um, during these processes. Um, the uh, rough forming, like that was the like first round of sheeting, and is combining process, and uh, so that's the second round of sheeting, right? And then like third round of sheeting, like that we are gonna do is like in the second um, combining process, and during these processes, it's like we're trying to go slow, and uh, you know that's like we're going like slow speed, slow speed, but, like sheeting, and it's just to make sure um, that. No, yeah, that's the like speed volume. Like you know, it's it's pretty easy. Like you just you know um, turn it to you know speed up, like speed down, and um, but like yeah, like we we just like on purpose, like intentionally we are um, going slow to make sure you know there's enough pressure to uh, be applied onto uh, dough, right? Because yeah. Because that's what we want, and you know that helps gluten uh, structure to develop uh, well. And so dough is coming out from the other side, right? And then, um, yeah, it means like uh, winding onto the rolling pin. And so from this point on, uh, what we want to do is um, you know dust the dough, right? Dust, dust it, like um, sufficient amount, like dusting powder, and um, yeah, the kind of powder, like kind of like uh, ingredient we use for um, this dusting powder is, um, yeah, we usually in Japan, like we have this uh, kind of specially uh, made dusting powder um, that uh, that's, that's basically made up like some like palm trees, like you know, palm tree starch. And um, so like uh, we use dust, this kind of dusting powder because um, when we cook noodles, right, like with this dusting powder on, um, it, you know, 
this is the sort of a, um, this doesn't count like it doesn't well um, yeah make make that um, the cooking water like you know um, dirty not as much as like other other starches do like um, for example like corn starch like potato starch um, yeah they all like kind of prevent uh, you know noodles from sticking but um, yeah bad thing about them is that like you know they like we we have cooked noodles right and they like you know cooking water um, they um, you know, get dirty, like over time, like more noodles we cook, right? The dirtier, like the uh, uh, cooking water comes, right? So, but um, uh, this type of like dusting powder, like that's made of like um, certain uh, palm trees. Um, they are, um, they, they are the like kind of water so that like, you know, makes the uh, water, um, um, how can I say, like least dirty. Um, so, that's why that's why like it's uh used in Japan, but like you know it's um it's it's not well if it's available uh you know like overseas like it's you know if it's imported from Japan then that that would be like really expensive so um the choice maybe uh you know uh yeah this like corn starch like potato starch um yeah that you yeah you want to use as that's in powder. And um, so, yeah, and then, um, so like this is the automatic dusting machine, like dusting device that we have, right, propelled. And um, so this device, like, just kind of in sync with the operation of the machine. And um, yeah, you can just, you know, uh, control the volume, uh, like dusting powder volume, like the touch of the knob, right? Uh, basically, the weather, the higher the hydration. Um, you know, the more you need the dust, All right? So it's a uh, yeah. So um, so we've done like a um, few rounds of shooting so far, and then um, so she's measuring the uh, thickness. Um, that's two point four, two point four, but like after it's going through like two millimeter. Well, a gap. So um, there's there's a difference of like 0.4 millimeter, and um, so the the actual thickness of dough like is always bigger than the roll gap that we said, and um, because you know the this dough we are talking about, right? Like, yeah, like I imagine like you know like you make like bread, right? Like bread like in expanses back, right? Like they. Uh, the bread dough like just you know bounces back like really um, by you know like significantly right? like if you push it and then, like it just bounces back right so same thing uh, so this is the cutter we use and uh, it's number 16 the square cutter and that means like um, that each group that you sew uh, is 2.0 millimeter in width. So the width is um, controlled by the cutter, right? We use that's that's pretty much fixed, right? Uh, so, but the thickness uh, is controlled by the roller gap, right? And so, like, um, yeah, the thickness we can um, adjust, right? And then, like, um, the width we have to, you know, change the cutter um, to, uh, you know, adjust it, right? And so. The type of noodle like we are making today is uh, yeah, so like um, we, we we call it like we call them like um, ma mazemen, uh, um, the soupless noodle like we did like we split ramen like we did like you know in the previous class, uh, but yeah, so it's a uh, it's a relatively thick noodles, and you know it's got like really um, this. Uh, the kind of like chewy um, texture to it, and so the noodles are coming out. <clears throat> and yeah, the the other feature that this machine has is that like you know it's a yeah it's like you, you wanna you know like change that that portion size right for your noodle. Like you know your customers may want to you know. Um, 
they eat more, you know, and so like, you know, you want to like make your uh, uh, portion size are bigger and this is how you do it. So like, you know, you make them longer. Um, yeah, and um, so, yeah, someone asked a question like, so what, what flour, um, you know, we use to make ramen noodles and then, um, yeah, so uh, basically uh, the, you know, like just the protein content, right? Like ramen noodles, uh, like tend to be like thin, and um, you know we have to make them, um, yeah, uh, like relatively hard, right? Relatively hard, um, thin and hard noodle. So typically, like ramen noodles, like depending on what kind of ramen noodle you're making, but like typically we um, use flour that's like you know 10 percent to maybe like. 12% in protein content. So uh, some ramen shops actually use, um, you know, some type of like bread flour. And uh, so, um, yeah, so basically the harder the protein content, uh, the hard, I, that like more protein, right? Because the protein content like harder the noodle texture. So for ramen noodles, you know, like we basically use um, flour that has like, um, yeah, 10 to 12% like for, this kind of thing, uh, reasonably thin noodles. But if you're talking about like, you know, tsukime or like uh, kind of dipping noodles that are like kind of very thick, and uh, then, you know, you want to lower your protein. Okay, so, yeah, so that, that's how you make, how you can make um, pumpkin seed ramen noodles from scratch. And this is for um, a uh, mazemen um, type ramen, soup-less ramen, and so um, let's bring them to our kitchen, and um, yeah, our instructor's waiting to uh, show us the, uh, the Halloween ramen, so Okay, so um, this is our kitchen, and like this is our so instructor uh, Miss Sano, and uh, she's uh, newly uh, the new recruit. Like you know, she joined us like uh, just a few months ago, and uh, so she is going to show us uh, the Halloween ramen that uh, you know she made for us, like just for this class. All right, so let's get started like a bit the uh, um, mazemen. Okay, so first like let's start like cooking the uh, the pumpkin seed ramen noodles. Um, yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, so let's start cooking and yeah, we need to start them, right? We need to start the noodles first. To make sure they are all okay. Ah, good. So while the noodles are cooking, like let's uh, may start making the uh, tare, the sauce for um, the soupless ramen. Okay, so mashed pumpkins and. Um, that's the uh, this like concentrated soup, like the chicken, python soup. Add it and uh, stir stir it well. Okay, so adding the uh, the salt, sorry. Okay, so yeah, there's a, a version that uh, uses that uh, like so show you tare too, but like you know we want to keep the um, the pumpkin color, 
And so you will be using the uh, solve tariff, uh, show tariff. And adding flavor oil. Okay. So, so last week, um, we uh, adding, she's adding like uh, mirroring uh, with like all these uh, alcohol like evaporated. Okay, so um, like means chashu, pork chashu, meat. Okay, so uh, the basil, that's, you know, um, yeah, minced. All right, hands up. Uh, so the cooking timer is like, like two minutes and 10 seconds. Okay, so make sure that, you know, you strain like all the water, right? And adding to the bowl and to start them well. So just salt it a little bit. Okay, so let's plate it. <laughs> so like, you know, we, like I had them carved, um, kind of kind of typical uh, Halloween jack-o'-lantern um, pumpkin. So she laid like some like a tin foil like inside and just to um yeah like some have some have some height right so I'm gonna plate it and yeah looks kind of spooky um because the noodles. Noodles kind of, well, maybe just to me, but like kind of like, kind of brain. Um, <clears throat> and and uh, maybe a bit, oh, so, so it's, it's, it's say that like that's a, that's a mouth, right? Like in that, well, maybe, a, maybe jaw, jaw that's, Kind of sticking out or some, um, and uh, so yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's yeah, that's that's pretty spooky, and okay, so um, okay, so um, gonna add like a little more chashu on top, and um, and then um. Yeah, so I had some. So, so the chopped um, the chili, chili peppers, and um, so like one like some like red, right, red color, and this is. Oh, okay, this is a ghost. Um, that's that's uh, cut out of uh, sliced cheese. Okay, and okay, so like this uh, nori uh, cut out to that shape, uh, star. Yeah, so just kind of, well, kind of like place them like randomly, kind of different places, and then, and these are, Yeah, uh, so like our leaves, and yeah, I just put it on top. Uh, sorry, this is a basil. Okay, so 
as a plating like just down like on top right apart and then yeah let's do the mouth the jaw um, yeah that's yeah, it's a master that master then that's yeah we got mustard and then um, that's the chili powder chili powder you know or some red uh, and and yeah and I'm I'm, I'm just gonna do the um, Yeah, it's like uh, I'm putting a master like in this, um, well, kind of like this like paper, um, paper kind of like squeezer and kind of to like, kind of like, you know, make like kind of, kind of like a pencil. And uh, so I can, I can write it onto the plate. Yeah, just uh, you see, like what I'm writing, and so that's that's happy. Yeah, I think I think like most of you know, like uh, most of you know, like uh, what I'm writing. Happy Halloween, right? <laughs> yeah, this is this is great, and because uh, spooky enough, and but like you know, not too scary to like kind of like scare away like the kids, right? Um, yeah, so, uh, so I think this is a good um, dish for especially for kids, right? Kids like for like maybe like um, under uh, under twelve, um, yeah, and. Um, so like we got pumpkin, but like that's kind of Japanese pumpkin. So um, it's kind of sweet. And uh, uh, yeah, well, you know, it's <laughs> I, I don't know like how many pumpkins that you'd have like as a like like bowl um, with dish, but like um, yeah, I mean you know it's like you can do like an unlimited you know, addition, like, you know, you can limit the number of, like, servings that you can serve a day, right? You know, if you have, like, you know, five or something, and then, you know, that that would be great, you know, if you, because, you know, like, customers, like, would just look at it and, like, and see, like, well, wow, you know, and then um, let's put it in the menu, like, take a picture of it, like, and put it in the menu, and uh, so that itself, like, would uh, generate some, like, you know, water mouth, right, and then, like, um, take, take a picture, and then, like, you know, um, yeah, put on a post on the Instagram, and so uh, that that would create um, you know like it make a viral, and you know, uh, yeah, even though like you know all these people like kind of like come to your shop like kind of well looking for uh, this particular menu, um, but you know it's out, but like you know of course like they would like definitely like not gonna leave not eating, um, they would like grab grab some of your usual items as well, so. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, Halloween ramen that we did like for this class, and uh, so yeah, it's it's great to you know take advantage of like take, like it's a chance for us to kind of express our like unique creativities um, in you know what we offer, and then you, know, you can definitely like, it's easy for you to be able like kind of yeah just got, kind of go crazy right um, you know especially like, this is Halloween. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, we're not just talking about Halloween, but like, you know, other special occasions as well. Um, yeah, my favorite one would be like a Cinco de Mayo, but like, um, yeah, this is for Mexico. Um, but yeah, that's for the um, other class. Thank you so much and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.